Ruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Uh, tonight's lecture will be the conclusion on the lectures on the month of Elul. And as I mentioned, we are preparing ourselves for the Day of Judgment. But the question really becomes, who judges whom? You know, we say that God sits in judgment of all mankind on this day. But what is interesting is that we judge others, including God, daily. How we judge others has a great impact on how God will judge us. There is a Hasidic belief that when you die, you really have no recollection of who you are. And you are told that you are a prosecuting attorney and you must prosecute the individual who is there in the court. Who is that person? And the answer is you. If you are always kind to others and forgiving, <clears throat> then when you prosecute yourself, you will do so with mercy and kindness. However, if you are judgmental and critical of others, hmm, then that will be how you will judge yourself. So the answer is train yourself to see others in a positive light. As Reb Mendel of Kutsk, the Kutsk Rebbe would say, that insanity was put into this world so that one person can look at another and see him in a positive light, even though it's completely crazy. So the question becomes, are we punished because we sin? Or maybe we're punished because of a lack of gratitude for all that God bestows upon us. It says in the portion of Kisovo 2847, in the middle of the Tochucho, the admonitions, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with happiness and a glad heart from an abundance of everything. We see with Achov, who was an evil king of Israel and who was an idol worshiper, that when his troops went to battle, no one died. On the other hand, when the troops of King David went to battle, they did die. <clears throat> Question is why? The answer is because there was peace and brotherhood, happiness among Achov's followers, whereas at the time of David's reign, there was not. When God sees that his children are happy and getting along well with each other, even if they disobey him, he doesn't punish them. However, if they are angry and contending with each other, then he does punish them with what they deserve. It's much like a human father who is hurt much more when he sees the children arguing amongst themselves rather than arguing with him. We need to always remember that God Almighty is our Father. He loves us. And he wants us to succeed. In reality, there's no challenge that he gives us that we cannot overcome. We just need to believe and stay the course. We always need to follow the words of King David in Psalm 100, verse number 2. If do us Hashem b'simcha. Serve God with joy. Even in the most trying of times, we must believe in our relationship with our Father in Heaven and know that everything, everything has a positive purpose. And in the end, there, will be that there may be things in our life that are bitter, but we will come to realize that it has made us better. You know, there's a saying that says that in the end, everything will be good. So if it's not good, it's not the end. And a person needs to believe that. If someone really wants his prayers heard and answered, there's a simple solution. Pray for someone else. Look around you. You are not the only one with problems, requests, hopes, addictions, and desires that you want God to answer. Some are frivolous. Well, those don't really matter. But others are critical, crucial. Health, children, marriage, happiness, even a spiritual low. When you pray for someone else who has the same problems as you do, your prayers have much more depth and sympathy. We see in the Torah that Abraham Avinu, Abraham our father, prayed for the members of Abimelech's household when Sarah was abducted and their openings were closed by God as a punishment for him doing so. Sarah was 89 years old at the time and barren, and yet when Abraham prayed for Abimelech's wives that they should be able to give birth, that prayer opened Sarah's womb and she was then able to conceive and give birth to Yitzchak. 
even at the age of 90. When God sees a person care for someone else, then he looks at that person's requests and many times, many times answers them in the affirmative and many times answers his prayers first. We can see God's benevolence as a father in connection with the command that we fast on Yom Kippur. In the book of Ayikra, in the portion of Amor 2327, it states, which translates to mean basically that the tenth of the seventh month shall be the day of atonement for you. It is a sacred holiday when you must fast. But what's interesting is then in verse 32, it states, the word for fast is used again in the verse. And that you shall fast on the ninth from evening until the next night. But the question becomes, we only fast on the tenth. On the ninth, what we do is we eat. So why does the Torah use the same term, v'inisem, fast for both the ninth and the tenth? What the verse should really say is, one is commanded la'achol to eat on the ninth, and v'inisem, and fast on the tenth. So why does it say the word fast for both the ninth and the tenth? So there's a precept that if one were to fast for two consecutive days, the reward that one would receive for the second day fast is many times greater than one receives for the first day fast. Not just double. In the Gemara and Brachos, the Talmud states in 8b, and asks the question, do we actually fast on the 9th? In reality, we only fast on the 10th. The Gemara continues and says, the wording tells us that anyone who eats and drinks on the 9th the Torah considers it as if they had fasted on both the 9th and the 10th. So even if we were not commanded to eat on the 9th, since the next day we are commanded to fast, we would automatically eat a lot to prepare ourselves for the upcoming fast. In fact, we're the only nation probably that can fast for one day and put on five pounds. We make sure that we take care of that. However, God Almighty, being a love, loving Father, uses the term v'inisem, fast, instead of ochel, eat, so that our reward for fasting on the 10th would be like a two-day consecutive fast and would be many times greater. So what's the bottom line? Change something. Not everything. Changing something may allow you to succeed. Changing everything is a recipe for failure. That's exactly what the side of evil wants you to do fail and then be despondent as the holy Baal Shem Tov says more than the Yetzirah wants you to sin he just wants you unhappy if you're unhappy sin is inevitable what, he, what the side of evil wants you to do is to give up tshuva is much like trying to stop smoking most people cannot stop cold turkey all at once so the best advice is to start slow. Just take one cigarette out, the, out of the pack and don't smoke it. And little by little, one at a time, you may actually be able to kick the habit or at least cut back. We have to approach our tshuva, our repentance, with logic. We need a game plan. It won't happen by itself. So during this period, the question becomes, what should we pray for? Pray for others friends, family, even strangers, and maybe especially strangers. But most of all, pray for the Shekhinah, the divinity of God that can come out of exile. Because we know that when we went into Galut, when we went into the exile, the Shekhinah went with us. Pray for God and the coming of Mashiach. No angel can contest a prayer that asks that the Shekhinah should no longer be in pain. The coming of Mashiach is like a blanket that will cover all of our needs, answer all of our questions, and help us to overcome all of our challenges in life. Aksiva v'chasim tova. May you and yours be inscribed and sealed for good, and may you be blessed with a sweet and special year 
with the coming of Mashiach Tzidkenu, quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless. And again, have a happy and healthy and sweet year. God bless you all.